Casey. Good. How's it going? Good. Um, you ready for your interview? Yeah. I'm trying not to be ready. <laughs> so, tell us about what you're painting right now. Um, this is the first collaboration with Imagine from Nepal uh, via Boston. And, um, yeah, this is a mashup, mashup of our styles. Um, she does like a Sanskrit calligraphy inspired by like the TV and different other sounds. And, um, we'll make up the fabric of my character and the, the hands on this piece. So it'll be like gray hands and the three hands holding the fabric that's covering her face are reference not from our hands. So the ones holding the fabric are her hands, the paying hands are my hands. Um, yeah, so this is just what we imagined as a mashup of our styles. Yeah, it's uh, celebrating the API month and us both being Asian artists. Um, so it definitely represents both of our culture and our background um, and celebrates that. So I'm super happy to have that um, appreciation and to have the opportunity to have the platform. Um, I am half Japanese, fourth generation. Um, my family moved to Utah, and my great-grandpa helped other Japanese families um, move to Utah and work on his farm, but also like, it was kind of a safe place um, around that time for other Japanese families working on his farm because they were more established in the community at that point. Um, so yeah, my family uh, there's still a lot of my Japanese family right there around the far where our farm was here in Utah. And so I grew up around that community. Um, that I think was just natural for me to like identify with that part of me and the Japanese family that I had around was like um, Uh, pretty pretty big we, like all of our gatherings and stuff like that it was all like Japanese food and Japanese like traditions and you know uh, that just shaped who I am and uh, along with art being a huge inspiration as a little kid uh, drawing uh, as I've gotten older and further in my practice, all of that stuff has just come out more as really just um, part, you know, like self-discovery and you know, on a personal side that's expressed in my in my art. And, Thanks. Uh, a lot of early inspirations and family things that um, have inspired my art more and more and just come out sort of naturally. Moving here in Denver, um, like six years ago, that my work has been able to stand out a lot, I think partially because of that element and the connection to my, myself and my, my roots, that that's, uh, in a way, there's somehow a strong like brand that's created in that. Um, but also, I think as artwork, uh, as I've gotten more in, on the side of like public art and being hired for things that definitely represent the community and more than myself, that there's been more of a recognition of the importance of cultural representation for the community, you know, in the, in the community. Mm -hmm. And so with there being a, maybe a bit of a void or not that many artists that are doing what I'm doing necessarily, it's allowed me a lot of opportunities because of that. I think. And so I'm really appreciative of that, that uh, you know, 
know, it is something that's so connected to me personally and represents me personally that it feels on a personal level like I'm being appreciated and, and not just... Does that make sense? Like, yeah, um, makes sense. So I feel very... Uh, Yeah, just uh, appreciated, and it's a somewhat somewhat lucky thing to me that I've naturally gone that route with my work, and in the times that we're in, and everything that it feels like it's relevant, you know, mm -hmm. um, in different ways. So. so I grew up drawing from my comic books and always drawing characters and a lot of faces and stuff like that. But I, um, I drew from my practice and stuff like that. That's kind of how I hold my skills as a kid, um, just drawing with a pencil. And that was like majority, you know, that was like my foundation, I would say, that until like high school I drew from references almost entirely and didn't really draw from my imagination so much. And there was a, a, a solid like shift in my focus after high school when I kind of felt like I tapped into something creatively that led me to like almost obsessively drawing faces, mm. specifically just the face and the features that um, was expressing, creating this character, not intentionally on a path that I've been on, but just these faces and the capturing expression in the face that I would draw over and over. And um, at the same time, I started expanding on my medium and moving into paint, working with a brush, and so all of that at the same time as I was drawing these faces, um, I started painting, and I painted you know, trying to mimic my, my roots in drawing, and so that's where the black and white um, and my color palette kind of naturally I gravitated towards because I was trying to mimic my drawing and what I knew how to do and a style I had already sort of developed with my drawing. So that just sort of moved into painting and at the same time the character developed a bit through starting to work with a brush and uh, mimicking my, my drawing style. And then pretty quickly around that time I was working larger with a brush, um, different mediums, and then started implementing spray paint, working with spray paint. And that all informed like how the character developed with these as I moved from like one medium to another, but but trying to mimic the same style which was developed when I was a kid or, or through my youth, you know. So uh, the the character at some point I specifically was like gravitated towards trying to capture what um, we found beautiful in like a face, you know, each of us individually and like beauty being in the, in the eye of the beholder, that was sort of like an obsession in a way of trying to capture that somehow, that that's something that's um, in a way you can't really put into words of what exactly it is that you're, you know, you find so intriguing or attractive uh, about somebody or the, the, the features that make them really, you know, and something about that that I was trying to create through a simple means, it was like a simple focus but very complex at the same mm -hmm. time somehow. And my character, through all of those things combined, um, has just sort of come into focus more and more, I would say. And then, as I started working on walls and painting bigger and bigger, uh, with different compositions and things, uh, yeah, I was sort of forced to 
but also my, my focus on the character has sort of like expanded of where I imagine uh, you know, the world that she's in and, and what, she, what it represents on another level, you know? So all of that is just sort of informed where it is now. And, My family um, on both my grandma and grandpa's side comes from samurai ancestors. Uh, and so my grandma had quite a bit of like Japanese art or some ma major uh, pieces of Japanese art in her living room that were samurai. And these two big, like almost, they were made of fabric and then all the line work was like stitched. And, uh, to the piece and those were like super inspiring to me as a kid and different the little dolls on her mantle and things like that that I've recognized as I painted some of my walls that how similar it's like a, a mashup of like things that were in my grandma's living room and yeah. my, uh, combined with like all of the the comic book characters that I would draw over and over and, you know, things like that. That's where the samurai um, influence comes from. All of the work that I've put into realizing uh, what's internal and like the linear imagination, that through that work I've created something that um, through my art has been a bridge to the influences of my work, which is very personally important to me, and um, it is me, you know, so it's almost been a bridge that I've built, I recognize, in a way to connect with people um, and to have conversations with really somebody walking up on the street to me working, and they're, they're seeing and interacting with, like, the best version of that I've been, created something that allows for that interaction with a complete stranger. And I think that's a, like a, where, where you have the opportunity to have a real impact with your, the source of why you're, any of us are doing this. And it's really that, I think, too. What is so inspiring to me that I'm trying to get across in my work and through my work and why I'm doing what I'm doing, it's to spread that, you know, and to get, express that and to have it felt. And, and I think that's through the connection, the real connection. What music do you like to paint to? I have different instrumentals and stuff that I like, will listen to a lot. Um, it's different stuff, random stuff, but some of it is like, electronic, like Glitch Mob, and, um, yeah, different stuff, a lot of hip-hop. Do you usually paint to music? Um, yeah, most of the time. When I'm painting by myself, I'll paint, like, listening to podcasts and stuff like that a lot. When I'm painting, like, in a studio, um, but I'll, I always listen to music if I'm, like, painting at a wall. What's your favorite podcast? Uh, on Purpose with Jay Shetty was like a big podcast I got into and listened to like a whole thing which all of that so it's changed me just over the past couple of months. So. Nice. Do you have an anime or superhero alter ego? No. <laughs> Dream location to paint a mural? Japan. Dream artist collaboration? I'd say uh, one of them, Max Hansen. That's a dream one. I awesome. want to make that happen someday. You will. We will. We, we will. I will help <laughs> you. <laughs> He's um, on board. We're just gonna, I gotta get to Chicago, I think. Great. But yeah, hopefully one day. Author, poet, or a writer who inspires you? Uh, Ray Bradbury is a writer that inspires me. That was where I, I with, with, with reading and with, uh, novels and things, I, I wasn't really into fictional stories so much that got me in, into reading a lot. And 
it was getting into like nonfiction books that I started reading a lot, but then there was a switch that happened with Ray Bradbury where I read um, Fahrenheit 451 and then I read an excerpt in the book or in the end of the book that was written by uh, Ray Bradbury that sort of made me shift my focus on stories and on novels and things that to recognize the work the the create the piece of art that it was and by the artist that was what they were expressing writing that fictional story uh, that Ray Bradbury really sort of inspired with me that changed my wanting to really dive into fictional stories because of the real life connection that it was being expressed that I could then connect to somehow. So that was thanks to Ray Bradbury. Nice. If you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, who would it be and why? There are certain uh, crafts that I've been inspired by. Um, like magic and when people are dedicated to it at that level and really to be good at to make magic seem real and to make magic real it almost has to it's been you have to treat it like the art form it is and really uh, take it have a insane amount of discipline to almost like wheel real magic into existence, you know, mm. through your work and through your dedication to it. So I find a connection to how I approach art with that craft and um, and comedy too, stand-up comedy, that I'm like intrigued by the craft and uh, that same weird kind of contrast that exists in the craft and especially with comedy because All these people are very serious about a thing that we can seem serious about, you know, in a way to be good at it. It's light and it's like laughing, it's about, so the idea of like forcing, creating humor and like, uh, and most of those people coming from weird, dark places and that's really how they found that light, you know, so. Um, yeah, other names I would come up with is maybe some comedians and like people that I could sort of be inspired by that part of their craft. Do you have a favorite comedian? Bobby Lee is like a huge, uh, one of my favorite, and Tiger Belly is one of my favorite podcasts. For sure. Nice. Do you know what konbini food is? It's like food that's in the convenience store in Japan. Oh, uh, okay. Do you know, have you ever had any of it? Um, no, but I've watched just like videos and stuff of like YouTube videos of like the 7-Elevens and like those kinds of places, what the food is like in Japan. What's something that you would like to try? Um, I think I would just get into all the kinds of ramen, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the cup ramen and stuff like that. I went to Little Tokyo as a kid with my uncle, and there was one shop that was like a, a sweets shop. Fukatsudo. Is it still there? Yeah. What is? What would you call those? Manju. Guys? Manju? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like want to try everything in a store like that. So nice. yeah. There's smells that take me right to my grandma's house, and that's one of them. Is like rice cooking, and my grandma had a, a rice uh, dispenser that mm -hmm. you would just hit the thing, and like a cup would come out each what? Uh, tap. Yeah, and it was just this big uh, kikoma on my rice holder. And if I could ever find one of those things, I'd love to have one of those as an adult now. But um, uh, I actually didn't know how to cook rice until I moved to Washington. Like just after high school, I moved to Washington and was working in a restaurant. And that chef taught me how to cook rice, which was kind of embarrassing. And he was like, what, you don't know how to cook rice? But now I cook it without a rice cooker, like every time. Um, but a specific dish, it was really like, 
that, that, that kind of has the mochi connection. I think the smell too, and that being so deep, it connects to all of that. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's like the deepest connection with rice is the mochi connection. And this takes me right to my grandma's. And just thank you for everybody that supports my work and um, I'm forever grateful all the love and support that I've received from Denver and the, the community. Um, and I hope with this piece that everyone um, really appreciates it and connects with it. Um, and yeah, I'll just see you guys at the next uh, job. Event.